Low River family, thank you for joining us on this third Sunday in December. If you're watching it in real time, this is the 18th. We're glad you're here with us. I want to tell you about a couple of things. First of all, this evening at 530 is our night in Bethlehem. It's a time for you to bring your young children, walk through the town of Bethlehem right here in our foyer. Uh, it's kind of a come and go thing. You'll learn a lot, have an amazing time as a family. Love for you to be a part of that. On the 24th, we have Christmas Eve candlelight communion service. It's a family service. Everybody's welcome to be there. Uh, we're going to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Then on the 25th, which is also a Sunday and also Christmas Day, we're going to have, I'm calling it Family Circle Christmas. We're going to gather up in a circle and we're just going to celebrate and sing, hear a short word, be encouraged as we go about living our life for the risen Savior. There's also uh, some ways that you can serve even in this busy time. One is we have this uh, mission opportunity where you can get uh, goods from uh, developing countries and poorer folks and you can uh, acquire those goods and, and make them gifts for others and it helps them and it also helps the church which we will turn back into missional things. We'd love for you to be a part of that as well. And as always, you can participate in the life of the River of Life Church three different ways. And that is you can uh, participate by sending a check and giving at 539 U.S. Highway 83, Abilene, Texas 79602. Or you can give by secure text at 84321. Or you can give by going online, theriverabilene.com, theriverabilene.com. Go to the drop down and you can securely give there. Love for you to be a part of this amazing church through giving. Here's my question. What animal in the animal kingdom has the longest memory? Talk amongst yourselves. We'll see you in a minute. Come, let us sing for the joy of the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God.
Oh.
there's nothing that you want more. It's got to be you, Jesus. There's nothing we want more. 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 Welcome again, River family. And you're probably wondering what animal has, in the animal kingdom, has the longest memory. It's actually the dolphin. And it's been proven by National Geographic that in 20 year hiatus in relationship, dolphins can recognize each other's specific sound. It's, it's interesting that memory, remembrance, and protecting that uh, is an amazing way to walk through difficulty. Back in 1989, there was a horrible earthquake, an 8.2 on the Richter scale earthquake in Armenia. And in a period of four minutes, 30,000 people lost their lives. One man um, made sure that his wife was secure after the shaking stopped, and he sprinted down to a local school to check on his son, Armand. While he was there, he discovered that the school was essentially flattened. Parents had gathered, everyone was in tears. But this father remembered something he told his son. He said, no matter what happens, son, I'll always be there for you. This memory, the moment he said it, just continued to reverberate in his psyche and in his heart. So he kind of figured out basically where the room would have been that his son was in. And he crawled up on the debris and he began to dig. There were several other parents that joined him initially, but 
After a while, they gave up. He dug for 12 hours. And then others said, it's hopeless. They didn't make it. The father just continued to dig 12 hours. People continuing to say, you need to give up. He dug 24 hours. People continued to say, you got to give up. The police showed up and said, it's dangerous. There's fires, there's explosions. You need to give up. But in his mind, he couldn't quit remembering when he said, no matter what, I'll be there for you. So he continued and he dug 36 hours, bleeding, shirtless. And in hour 38, he yelled out, Armand. And a faint, weak voice responded. And he discovered that where the school had collapsed, it had created a V. And Armand and 13 other students had survived in that V. And he was able to save them. And his son chose to be the last person out because he said, I remember your words, Dad, that you'll always be there for me. Save my classmates first. You see, memory, remembrance of experiences is vital in expanding our worship as well. And it's powerful in walking us through the most difficult of times. So beloved, let's learn today in this part of the Christmas story from a teenager how to expand worship. Let's go to the Lord. Lord, I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for how powerful it is. I want to thank you for this story that we hear all the time. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would make this story special, more alive, more powerful. And Lord, that we wouldn't just see it as something we hear all the time but that we would see it as something amazingly fresh. So open our eyes and hearts to what you want us to say today, and I pray that I would decrease and that you would increase and be our preacher and teacher. And all the people said, Amen. I hope you said Amen. So if you have a Bible, uh, turn to Luke chapter 2. We're going to be in verse 8. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. Very familiar. Uh, Mary and Joseph have made their way to, to Bethlehem, and they are registering for the census and during this time the baby comes and some peculiar amazing things happen shortly after this birth look in verse 8 <clears throat> and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night now here's the interesting thing shepherds have a at this particular time in palestine have a pretty rough reputation they are not necessarily the cream of the crop they're known as uh, dishonest and maybe thieves. This is who God chooses to share the good news with. An angel of the Lord appeared to him and the glory, doxa, the glory of the Lord, meaning God's divine presence showed up, shone all around them and they were terrified. Just the presence, the glory of God around them was so powerful they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news. There'll be cause for great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, that being Bethlehem, important in the lineage of Christ that Jesus be born in the town of David and that he be a descendant of David. A Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is Messiah. That's uh, Hebrew for Savior the anointed one, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, now this is interesting, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom His favor, favor rests. Now here it says, the great company, it's a strata. It's a <clears throat> word meaning the host, the heavenly host, as in the armies of God showed up. And these poor shepherds 
taking care of the sheep that very well may be part of the sacrificial sheep going into Jerusalem are all of a sudden surrounded by the armies of God. They're talking about this amazing birth. I think it would have been terrified too. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off. Now, likely they know multiple places. There would be stables or, or barns or uh, places, uh, uh, caves where animals would be held. They're probably going methodically checking each one of them out. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who's lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what he had been, what they'd been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. And then all of a sudden, a first time teenage mother gives us an amazing picture of how to have a life of adoration, a life of humbly bowing to God, a life of expanding worship that makes what happened in her life permanent. This teenage, first-time mother, virgin, does something amazing even after all the things that have gone on. Watch what happens. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now, let me read it again. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The last couple of weeks we've been talking about how people in the birth narratives in the time around Christ being born expanded worship. We know that John the Baptist did this amazing thing where he realized his birth, his whole existence was about adoration, submission, licking the hand of his Savior, absolute worship of God Almighty. That's why he was born. That's what he was here for. That's what we're here for. And then we also learned that Joseph was willing to expand worship into places even though, even though loving God meant expanding his life into shame. He expanded his love of God into those really rough parts, into difficult times. Now a teenage girl ponders up, treasures up, and ponders, mulls over, the things that God has done. Let me unpack that for you just a little bit. It says this. It says that she treasured. She treasured these things up. And it is the, the, the Greek word sunterio. It means to, to preserve, to keep close, to keep safe, to keep in mind, to guard with the compound verb, it, it's very, very expressive. It is like taking what has been experienced and putting into Fort Knox. You're going to protect it with the best security that you possibly can. These are things she treasured up. Then it says that she treasured up all these things. Say things. Things. Well, what are the things? Interesting word. It is things or matters, and it's the word remata. You've heard the word rhema probably when we're talking about the Word of God. Ramada is a spoken word by the living voice. A thing spoken, commanded, report, promises, a matter of business. So what she's treasuring is God's divine Word God's divine presence, God's divine will, God's divine walking you through, God's divine encouragement, God's divine joy, God's divine presence in grief coming down from heaven, God's movement 
his mission, his very presence in her life, she was going to treasure those things. She was going to lock them away and protect them. Then it goes on to say this, she, married, she treasured these things up and she pondered them in her heart. So what are some of those things? Specifically for Mary, Gabriel came to visit her. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. You don't think she didn't hold on to that? Joseph didn't divorce her, but said, hey, angel came to me in a dream. She goes to visit her, her relative. And Elizabeth, the baby, John the Baptist inside of her, leaps. She realizes that she's bearing the Son of God. Then, a company of shepherds show up to be able to say, listen, the entire sky cracked open. All of God's army was there, and they told us about this baby. Those are the things, those are the words, those are the experiences of God that she is treasuring up. And then she's pondering them. Ponderance is another interesting word. It means to consider. It's the Greek word symbolo. It means to throw together, to discuss, to consider, to meet with, listen to this, to incubate. To keep fresh, never at the back of the brain, mold over often. Are you beginning to kind of follow where I'm going with expanding worship here? Now where? Where is she treasuring the things of God and considering them? Where is she doing this? In her heart. Cardia. Um, the word lave in the Hebrew and cardia in, in, in the Greek. It's mentioned uh, over 800 times in the Scripture. And not once does it mean the muscle that pumps blood in your, in your body. It means the center point of your being, the uh, seat of your will, your emotions, uh, where you make decisions. It is your heart, your mind, is your inner self, the effective center of your being. So maybe we should put it all together and learn from this teenager. Mary, a teenage first-time mother, takes the things that God has done in her life, Gabriel, Joseph marrying her, this baby sitting before her, these shepherds showing up. She takes all those things and she locks them where they can't be taken. She locks them in her very heart, the center point of her being, and on a frequent basis, she looks them over and she remembers and she ponders and she explores the goodness of God. Keeping it ever present. You, um, you may um, know where I'm going. What has God done in your life? I don't know how many years you've been on this earth. Where has God sent His remata, His presence, His walking you through, His forgiveness of you, the day you were saved, the moment He did something special for you, the moment He provided for you, the moment He broke you so that you would come back to Him? Do you lock those up and treasure them in your heart? Do you ponder them? Do you look them over frequently? Keeping your adoration of this amazing God very, very fresh.
You probably heard of, of uh, John Newton, who's the author of Amazing Grace. In his older days, he began to struggle with his memory. In the course of that struggle with his memory, um, somebody asked him how he was doing with his memory. He says, not very good. But he said, I remember two things. I remember I'm a great sinner, but I have a great Savior. I don't suppose an old slave trader needs to remember more than that. That's a picture of someone who had taken this divine interaction with God. God showing up in his life. God forgiving him. God giving him a new life. Those amazing, amazing moments of God moving in his life. And he treasured them. And he remembered them. He mulled them over. He re-explored them so that his love, his worship, his expansive adoration of God remained ever fresh. Imagine a teenage girl has a baby in a barn. These are not good circumstances. It's going to get worse. And this teenage mom, 33 years later, after she's watched her son die brutally, seen him come back from the grave, seen him ascend, is one of the people at the table when the church begins. Because she had learned the fine art of treasuring the movements of God, locking them away in the depths of her heart and looking at them often. Beloved, I want to give you a word of advice during this crazy season. It can be busy, it can be a little crazy. But here's, here's what I want you to know. Mary was able to walk through all those years because she never let anyone or anything or any situation or any lie take away those treasured movements of God. They were expansive in the way she adored her son, her Savior. What has God done in your life? Where has God shown up in your life? Maybe 20 years ago. Maybe 50 years ago. Maybe 75 years ago. Maybe today. Did you let a situation a lie, a circumstance, a difficult time? Did you allow that to drop? Did you allow that to cause you to drop these treasured movements of God? Or do you keep them close? Do you keep them guarded? And do you mull them over, look them through often? I will never forget in 1973 walking down the center aisle of a church in Kermit, Texas and publicly saying yes to Jesus Christ. It is treasured still in my heart 50 years later. I'll never forget it. I'll never let anybody steal it. I'll not, never let any difficult situation cause it to be diminished. I have treasured it. I have protected it. And I am looking at it frequently. It makes me love Him more and more and more. Beloved, what has God done? Treasure it. 
examine it. Worship the one who brought it to you. Lord, I'm uh, thankful for this crazy example of a teenage girl who captured the whole idea of expanding worship in the depths of her heart. Lord, I pray now that each of us would be willing to look at the things that we have allowed to compete with our treasured moments with God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, those would be broken. And that we would elevate the treasured moments, we would hold on to them, we wouldn't let anything take them from us. And that we, Lord Jesus, would ponder them often. So now, Lord Jesus, help us to expand worship by always looking at the treasured moments that you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. No thing, no situation, no lie should ever take the treasured moments in which God has moved in your life. Keep them close. Look at Him often. Expand your adoration of Him because of what He is, what He's done, who He is. I pray you would expand worship by protecting those treasured things. God bless you. We'll see you next week.